Good morning as we go to the Chita. So today, today is Tuesday. Third reading in the portion of Pasha Shemini. Akeitzi Eitzel Se Hashem and the fire came out from God with Teich Lomaz Beich and they ate what's on the altar. It's Ayla, the burnt offering with Sachalavim and all the fats. Ayyad Om and when the people, Ayyad Om, the people saw this, Ayyad Enu, and they they uh, were joyful. And they fell on their faces. And then Aaron, uh, son's son, each took his pan. They put upon it a fire. By a seam of the is they put on the incense. By a cleave of the Hashem, they brought it as an offering before God. Age Zara, it was a it was a strange foreign fire. Uh Ashalate voice so much God did not command them. Verse number two, but Tate say H say Hashem and a fire came out from before God. But Taichlam and he ate them, consumed them, I saw my Musuf Nashem, and they died before God. Ablaza says the sons of Aaron died only because they rendered a lachic decision in the presence of Meshtabim. The teacher. Abi Shmuel says they died because they entered the sanctuary and have a drinking wine. And the proof of that, they, that there was a death, because after that, the Tate admonished the survivors that they may not enter the sanctuary after having drunk wine. So this analogy is to a, uh, to a, um, a person that, uh, a king that had, a, that had an attendant. Uh, it's brought on a Vikara, but in the message that he had an attendant to, um, who didn't, uh, you must enter that into the doorway of a tavern. And he found them at a tavern and they, uh, and they killed him, not knowing that this was the king's order. And then after that, he told his next servant, I don't want to see you at the doorways of taverns. So now we know the reason why he killed the first one because he was at the doorway of a tavern. Verse number three, this is what God said. Lame was saying, but crave a Kaddish. I will sanctify with those who are near to me. And before the Lord people, I will be glorified. By Yidimad and Adam was silent. Ash says, Where did he say such a thing? He said it, I'll meet the children of Israel. I will just sanctify through Bechvaydi, my glory. Do not read Bechvaydi through my glory, the Machvaydi, the Machvaydi to those that honor me. And my brother, I knew that this house would be sanctified to the beloved ones of God. But I thought it would either be through me or through you. Now I see that not the man of you are greater than I in you. Now she said Adam was silent, and he received a reward for his silence. And what was the reward he received? That the next, the next, the next law was given to him exclusively. As it says, that God told Aaron that he shouldn't drink wine, this law. Bekreivai, what means Bekreivai? It means the chosen to me. Akmei kal adam echei said, when the whole one blasphemy, exact judgment upon the righteous, he becomes feared, exalted, and praised. Now, if this considered the righteous, how much more so considering the wicked? As it says, also, God is your sanctities. Do not read Mikdashecha, your sanctities, but Mikdashecha, by one who sanctify themselves through you. Those who go on Kiddush Hashem, sanctify God's name. Ayikra, Meishal, Meishal, Velitzah, from Menei Yuzil. And Meishal, Ben Akol, Meishal, and Itzah, from Menei Yuzil. Dei Dan, which is the uncle of Adam. We told carry your, your, your brothers. from the sanctuary. out of the camp. Ash is during Adam. What means the uncle of Adam? Uziel was Amram's brother. And Amram was, was Aaron's father. As a person would say to his fellow, when someone dies at a wedding feast, the middle of a wedding, it's the middle of a celebration. Take your take the take the bride, take the the, the 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 one of the seeds out of the room, so that the bride can continue in the celebration. And therefore, he was told them 
to thus take that they should be carried out. So they approach and carry them in their tunics out of the camp, as God told, as God as Moshe been told. Now she says they were carried in their tunics. Of the dead one, the tunics, not of Avihu, not Mishom and Itzafen. Uh, the latter were Levites, not weird tunics. They were Kahanim, we're talking about the Kahanim. Not of Avihu, Kahanim. This teaches us that the garments were not burnt, but only their souls. The Medrash says two thread-like sparks of fire entered their nostrils, thereby destroying their souls along with their inner organs, but leaving their external body structure intact. Verse number six. Yehem Vaishal Adam Gum Vaishal Dan. Oh, the house is summer. It's Eliaz and his summer. Bana, Bana, Bana of his children. The Sheikh Al Tifra, you now shave your heads off. But the Gay Al Tifra, you don't render your garments. The Lisa Musi, you will not die. I'll call Adam Yixaf and the entire day, he will at least be angered on the entire community. The Chol of Acheichim and Esau, Yifka Sasreifa. And the house of Israel shall be way cry for this destruction, this burning, Asher Son of Hashem, which God burnt. And I said over here, we learned that he told them that they're not allowed to grow their hair long. From here we have learned that, the, that a mourner has to grow his hair long. A mourner is forbidden to cut his hair. But you, but the king told him you have to cut your hair. You'll not die. If you do so, you will die. It's the middle of the celebration of Beis Hamidosh. And your brothers will cry for this destruction. The Gemara says, from here we learn that when the Torah scholar, a great sage, and tzaddik, passes away, the entire community cries. When Pesach and from the camp, you shall not go out. From the door of the tent of meeting, you shall not go out. Tent of Musa, you might die. Yishema Mishras Hashem Aleph, because you have anointed by God. You cannot leave the Beis Amikdash at this present time. Ayasuk, Tvar Mishra, they listen to my Mishra. Verse number eight. Vaydab Hashem, Vaydab Hashem, Allah, and the name God spoke to us. Yayim Vesei Chaltesh, do not drink wine. That will lead you to intoxication. You and your children with you. When you come to the tent of meeting, you will not die. It's an everlasting law. She says, means wine that brings to intoxication. We know that the Kayin is forbidden when it comes into the of, when he comes into the Beis Hamidosh. How do we know that he's forbidden when he comes to the altar? So over here it says, Oyomayid, and it says by the sanctifying of the hands and the feet, it also says Oyomayid. Just like by the sanctification of the hands and feet, it means also the same law is about coming to the Mizbeach, to, the, to the, do the service outside the tent, the, the, the Mishka. Even on the altar, you had to wash your hands and feet. So too, this law that a, that a, a person is not allowed to get drunk, a client is not allowed to get drunk when he does a service, is whether the service in the temple or whether it's a service on the altar that was outside the temple. Verse 10, <laughs> distinguish between what's holy and what's profane. When I tell me, when I tell what's what is Clean, unclean, what's clean? Now she says, so you'll distinguish. If you're going to be drunk, drunk, intoxicated, you won't be able to distinguish what is holy and what's unholy. <clears throat> Over here we learn, now she said, this is to learn that if one performs a particular service after working, after drinking wine, it's invalid. Well, in verse 11, Lahari says, when Israel, to instruct the Jewish people, with the command which God commanded them, the admission and the mission. 
Rashi over here tells us this teaches us this is not talking about a client. This is talking about a rabbi, a sage, a person that's in the, in the that's supposed to render law. This teaches us one is, that is incurs uh, a person is prohibited to render a loss of decision when he's drunk, when he's intoxicated. One might think that he, he incurs death penalty. A rabbi would incur death penalty. If he would, if he would uh, render halacha when he's intoxicated, no. Therefore, the other term separated between the previous statement of a kari. Of a kari does a service when he's intoxicated, or tells me he's chayiv misa. A rabbi that rendered halacha when he's intoxicated is not. But and that completes the chumash. We now go to the Tanya of the day. So now Tereba has stated earlier that a person's intention while performing Tereba mitzvahs should be that his soul to cleave to God. That's what we're trying to accomplish. That's the simple meditation. Everything I do, that's why many Jews say the say. The Hungarian Jews they say the shame yuchud kuchavirchu It's all about the unity of God. It's about uniting God with the world and the world with the God Kodesh Baruch Hu. That is the simple meditation that we all need to do. That as in many synagogues, you know, Dalaf Tamiyatarim. No, you're standing for God. You're standing to connect to God. Every mitzvah that I do, why I'm already tired right now, is all to connect my seichel. To the Chachm of the Yibsht. How now he now goes on to say that the Jewish spiritual service also includes the goal of becoming one with all of the Jewish people. For this reason, his intention should not be limited to having his own soul cleave to God, but also that the source of his soul and the source of all souls of Israel cleave to God. By doing so, the individual brings about a union, a yichud, of the highest, higher and lower levels of godliness. Known respectfully as kutcha b'nichol, that's what I just told you, kutcha b'nichol, the Holy One, blessed be He, and His shechina, divine presence. L'shem yichud kutcha b'nichol shechinte. At Chabad, we say that before Baruch Shama, today in the morning, before davening, he said the, the statement, the shame, yechud, kutcha, brichu, ushkente. This is all about to bring about the unity between kutcha, brichu. Well, the Altar of Explained that means the higher, Kodesh Baruch Hu, the way God comes into Shkinte, the presence of God, and the former source of Torah and Mitzvahs, and to the latter source of all Jewish souls. And in kutcha, brichu, shame, call yourself. That's also his shame, Yuch Kuchibit, Shinte, Shame Kalisal, the name of all the Jews. It's important the concept of the Klal Yisrael, of the general, tell me about my personal soul, it's about all souls of the Jewish people. This explains the concluding phrase of the former recited before former to a certain mitzvah. For the sake of the union of Kodesh Baruch and Shinta, in the name of all of it, Bishem Kalis. Never notes the name of all of Israel implies that the union achieves through the performance of a mitzvah for the sake of, in the name of all of Israel. For it's with the Shekhinah and that the Kodesh Baruch Hu is united, and the Shekhinah is a source of all Jewish souls. So we know the Shekhinah, Malchus of the world of Atzilus, is the Shekhinah. So the Shekhinah, Malchus, of the world of Atzillus, we know, we've mentioned many times that the kingship of the world of the, of the world of emanation is called Shekhinah because it's a source of the, it's also called Knesset Yisrael, the gathering of all Jews, because it is the source of all Jewish souls. And therefore, the Shem Yichel Kodshem Ritzchel Shekhinte is we want that the Abish should come down and rest in Sfiris HaMalchus, HaMelech, and God should come down in Sfiris HaMalchus, which means God should rest upon the entire Jewish nation. So it's not only upon my soul, 
but I want that God should rest and become united with all Jewish souls. And that's why I'm doing every mitzvah. It's not about self, it's about community, about everybody. And that's what Dr. Rebbe explained. In fact, our, our rabbi, our sages of blessed memory said, Never a person should take himself out of the community. That was the Russia. Russia said, Russia said to you and not to me, never take yourself out of the community. You're always part of Cloud Yisrael. We are all part of one big body, one big nation, one big unified soul. Therefore, he should intend to unite and attach to him. God must be Makal and Nafsha the kiss. Umaka Nafshis Koyisol, the source of his divine soul, and in addition the source of all souls of Israel. Shuru Afpiv in his body, which is the spirit of the mouth, which is also called Shrina. It's called the Shrina. What's a Shrina? Shrina means Hashem Sheshechenes. Shrina means to dwell. Asli Mikdash Veshachanti. Make for him, I shall dwell. Shrina is where God dwells, so to say. There's revelation of God. Shrina is dwell Shechen Shechenet and clothe himself in an old world, animating them and giving them existence. That's the concept of Shrina. And this shchina, this shchina, shchina is also the word of God, because the, the the when you say the word of God is the shchina, is because the God dwells, the ruach, the oir Hashem dwells in the word of God. So so that's the, that's also the shchina. Dibur is, is also in Kabbalah the concept of the shchina. It is the Shrina which imbues him with the power of speech to utter his current words of Torah. For the power of action, to do this command. What gives a Jew? And we know that a Jew is obligated to, is obligated to, to, to do mitzvahs, but he's not. And a Jew is allowed to learn Torah, but he's not. Because a Jew has within him the Shekhinah. He has that concept of the Vat Hashem. He has the aspect of the word of God within him. And that gives him the capability to say the word of God. Once, therefore, if you understand this concept, the Abish in essence created you to say the word of God. You shall live with a Torah day and night. Why? Because in essence, you have the power. You have the capability, I have the capability. Not the something that I have acquired, it's something that I was given. I was given that capability and automatically that responsibility. So once you does intend to become united with the infinite earning side through speaking words of Taylor or performing a, a mitzvah, for it's the Shekhinah, which is the source of his power speech and action, as well as the source is divine soul and the soul of the whole of Israel. That's his source. His source is the Shekhinah, is Malchus of the world of Atzim. That's his, that's my source. My source is the, is the kingship of the world of Atzim, which is the Shekhinah, which is the Bar Hashem, which is the word of God. That is the source of my soul. That's the source of the Torah, the Bar Hashem, that gives my soul its capability to say divrei Torah, its capability to do a mitzvah. It all comes because my neshama comes from the world of Malchus, of the world of Atzilus, and therefore, which is the Shekhinah, presence of God. So I'm doing something which the Eivishta gave me all the capabilities to do. It's not something, I'm doing something impossible. I'm doing exactly what I was created for. And I have all the tools. 
that they, God gave me to be able to bring about this unity. Because in essence, how can a person bring the unification of godliness with the world? If the Abish himself wouldn't, if God himself wouldn't give him the tools. A human being cannot become spiritual, connect spirituality as a human being. Abish didn't need God need to give humanity the tools, which he gave tools. He gave us the tail. He gave us mitzvahs. We're not doing mitzvahs where I came up upon my own. He gave us everything. These are all the tools of greater unity between the physical and the spiritual. And if God would not give us his tools, we couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. It's impossible to do it. And this union of the source of all Jewish souls of God is attained through drawing forth the light of the blessed. I say, here, below. And how do we do it? The only way we can do it is by its tools, by the, through learning of Torah, by mitzvahs, and doing a mitzvah, which the Shekhinah is dwelt in that mitzvah. And the Shekhinah is, is, is in that Torah. So you have the Shekhinah in the Torah, and you have the, the Shekhinah, the presence of God in the mitzvah. And I do it, which I also have the Shekhinah. Now you have the unity between the upper worlds and the lower worlds. So we have the Abish that gave, God gave me a neshama, which comes from the world of Atzilus. God gave me a tail, which also comes from the shina, its presence of God. And he said, now bring them together. Let you as a human being learn tail. Let you as a human being do a mitzvah. And what you're going to do? The shame, yechot, kutcher, b'nechot, shintay. You're going to bring about a unification between the upper worlds and the lower worlds. Not only for yourself, shame call yourself. When I do a mitzvah, it affects every Jew. Every Jew, my, because in essence, it's about my soul. When I'm doing a mitzvah, it's about to connect my soul to God. My soul is part of the Jewish nation's soul. It's one big soul. And therefore, when I do a mitzvah, I do it for Klai Yisrael. I do it for every Jew. And it affects every single Jew, my mitzvah. My davening affects every single Jew. Every mitzvah I do with everything I do, my Torah affects the entire Jewish nation. And that should be my kavana. If that's what happens, that should be my kavana. My kavana should not be a selfish, so I do it for myself. I'm davening for everyone. That's why you see the, the davening is in plural. If I knew, what a knew. It's all plural. I don't dive in that God should heal me. I God should heal us. God should bless us. God should redeem us. Because it's about cloud yourself. It's about the general. It's not only about the personal. It's about the general. And that should be my kavana. My intention should be not only about myself, but about everybody. And therefore, I should have in mind, because that's what ha that's what's happening. It's happening. Whether I have a mind, I don't have a mind. It's happening, because my neshama is davening through my body, and my neshama is, is is learning through my body. And my neshama is doing this mitzvah through my body. If the yichud is happening, imagine if I had kavana, if I had intention that that's why I'm doing the mitzvah, not only to be yachad to become cleaved to God, but to cleave the entire Jewish nation to God. So the intent is to draw down the light of the, of, the, of the source of Israel and then the souls of all of Israel as united with him. The meaning of this union will be discussed at length later on Ayn Sham, Mid Shem, as we'll learn, Tanya, we'll learn more about this unity that brings about through every mitzvah. And this is the meaning of the words recited before the performance of various mitzvahs. Again, for the sake of the union of Kochebricho Shrinte in the name of all of Israel. That is to say, the one's observance of commandments unites Kochebricho, the source of the Torah and mitzvahs, with the Shrinah in the name of all of Israel. 
for the Shekhinah is the source of all souls. The Rebbe now notes that much more than a union of divine self and God is accomplished by study of Torah, the performance of mitzvahs. These activities also bring about hamtokot hadinah. This is an important concept because that's the struggle that as we come down into the world, in a physical world where there's a lot of dinim, a lot of judgments, harshness, and all this, we're trying to do this all about, we're trying to do this to, to, to sweeten the judgments. I'm talking I did it. The tempering, the sweetening of harsh judgments and gavuris and this transformation into kindness and chesed. This is affected through the kolos. This thing, the supernal spirits of chesed and gavura, kindness and severity. That's what it's about by me bringing about. When I do little trade mitzvahs here, I bring about a scalus. I bring about the mixture of chesed and gavura lamayla, the way it's in its spiritual sense. And that brings about the, the mixing of chesed and gavura here in this world. These spirits, which are by nature opposites, are fused into one through the revelation of the fusion and the fusion of divine light which is spiritually superior to them both. So the light of the supernal will drawn down upon the two attributes through the performance of Taylor Mitzvah, in so much as Taylor Mitzvah expression of divine will. Their spirituality far surpasses the spirituality of the spirits of Chesed and Gevur. When the divine will, the supernal kindness, is revealed through the study of Torah, and the performance of mitzvahs, the attribute of kindness and severity are united. And severity is transformed into kindness, which is called in Kabbalah, Hamtakis Hagivuris, the sweetening of severity. And that's the Alter Rebbe's, here is the Alter Rebbe's note. Uh, the Alter Rebbe's words, Megama de Zayim, took a gun to Agvuris, the Sodom and Mela. Through the performance of mitzvahs, the Vura will by themselves be sweetened by the Sodom through the Skalos, through the mixture of midas in their union. Hamidas be Yechudah. Are they Gilei Ratzanalian through by the revelation of God's will? That is, that is revealed on high to the stimulus of a Jew here below, who namely the revelation here below in one occupation in Teda and Mitzvah, saying that Sony is but for there the will of God. So the will of God is selfless and higher than the Mitzvah of HaKadosh Baruch. Thus, when a Jew reveals and draws down God's will into the world, into this world, as a result of his spiritual activities, the divine will will be revealed in the supernal spirits, resulting in the unification and the, the, the mixture of the midas so that the gavuris are sweetened by the transformation of Chazal. As we say, Oysa Shalom B'mreimav, Eivish that makes peace in the upper worlds between Chesed and Gevura. He sweetens the Gevura in the upper worlds, and that sweetens the Gevura in this world. Eivish Shalom and Meraimah makes peace in the upper worlds. Two different, two different manifestations, Chesed and Gevura, Mechol, Malach, Mechol, and Malach, Gavriel. Two different power forces. He brings about the will of God, which brings about a higher level in these, these, these two, you know, which brings them together, unites them together. As we say, like, to bring things together, to unite them, to, to, to bring a unity in them. And, why, and when the Yevishter brings this unity above of these Svirot, of Chesed and Gavura, that automatically affects this world, that automatically givuras in, in this world are changed. That's what we say, 
the holiness of Israel. Torah affects the world in a peaceful way. It brings about sweetness in the world. It brings about pleasantness in this world. Because that's the power. That's what we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to accomplish is the sweetening of severity. We should cause to be the Rabbah. As it brought down the Eid Rabbah in Kabbalah, where Mishra's Hasidim, Septus Arach Antin, in the tractate of Arach Antin, chapter 4. The 630 commandments of the Tayyag Mishra's Mishra the Arach Antin are derived from the whiteness of Hasidim of Arach Antin. To rot an alien, which is the supernal will, midas which is the source of, of, of kindness. So we know Shisha Sidi Mishra, we'll learn later. We learned a little before already that the, that the Kabbalah says Shisha Sidi Mishra comes out from, this, from the from the um, from, um, from the Midrash Lakhalish Bar, the six midas that's in the world of Yitzira, comes the Mishnah, what is allowed, what's not allowed. So that comes to chesed and gevura. What's allowed, what's not allowed. Chesed, what's allowed. Gevura, what's not allowed. You bring them together. You bring them together and you sweeten that what's not, 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 not allowed. So it brings about the concept of this. Where does it come from? It comes from something higher. The trader comes from, it comes from Arachampin, which comes from, uh, comes from Chachma. Arachampin is Chachma. And then, and, and, uh, and, uh, and understanding Chachma and Bina, the world of Atsilas, We'll learn that another time that these two kings come into the midas which sweeten these midas. Think about a scholars of the midas. Although this state in the Kabbalistic term, it's all Kabbalistic, we just said a Kabbalistic concept. The intent is clear. Kindness and benevolence are drawn down into the world through the study of Taita and the performance of it. So that's all what the Alter ever wanted to explain, what he explain in a Kabbalistic concept. What's happening above when a Jew learns to the mitzvah, when he brings about the shame and the bringing down of God, godliness, which is higher than the shkina, with the way it comes down into our emotions. We bring them together. Why do we bring them together? Because God makes peace in his abode above. He brings about the unification between these two. Powerful entities, Chesed and Gevura, and he sweetens the Gevura. So the Gevura is Chesed. So too happens ultimately Yasser Shalom Alein. The Torah and the Mitzvahs that we do, that we affect in the higher worlds, ultimately come down to this world. And this world becomes a sweeter world. This world that is full of Gevura, is full of dinim, full of judgment, turns into a sweet dark judgment. And that's the reason why a person should not only have a mind to rectify himself, but to rectify the entire Jewish nation. Then it should not only be good for himself, be good for all Jews around the world. And for there should be peace and tranquility and simcha and joy by all of us, an entire Jewish nation. And that completes Tanya of today. Today is the 20th day of the month, which is in the Tilim. In the Psalms is chapter 97, chapter 103. New chapter 97 to chapter 103. You do the Chitas of it. Tomorrow, Wednesday, is Yontif, Shvi Pesach. Thursday is Achen Shal Pesach. So uh, I hope that you will all learn your Tanya, your Chumash and Tanya by yourself, and you will have a beautiful Yontif. Tomorrow is going to tomorrow we'll read Az Yashir, the crossing of the sea, Shapir Shal Pesach, which really is the whole conclusion of the holiday of Pesach, the crossing of the sea. And then ultimately, an Akash of Pesach is the last day of Pesach in Golos, which is also the Baal Shem Tev, uh, I said it's Mashiach, the concept of the Akash of Pesach connected to the future, the concept of the coming of Mashiach. And therefore, we have a Sudas Mashiach. I invite you all. On uh, Thursday, to come together to celebrate the Baal Shem to Sudas Mashiach, to have a meal for the coming of Mashiach. And the Mid Shem will meet each other on Thursday, on Friday, again, over here on Zoom. It'll be Isra uh, Chag on Friday. We'll go back to the Chitas together on Zoom. I wish you all a good Yontif, 
Hag Sameach, and should be Simcha for each and every one of us, and for Klal Yisrael to be only great joy and happiness.